I want to turn now to important developments in the stories of three women who have alleged connections to the president in the past. The former Playboy playmate, Karen McDougal, squaring off in court against the tabloid media company that bought her story and then spiked it. She joins us exclusively Thursday night. The adult film star Stormy Daniels, whose attorney today released the results of a polygraph exam she took. Her attorney, Michael Avenatti, joins us to talk about this uh, as well. There's also Summer Zervos, who was on The Apprentice and who's accusing the president of sexual assault. Today, a judge in New York allowed her defamation lawsuit to go forward. We'll talk with Stormy Daniels' attorney, Michael Avenatti, in a moment, along with attorney David Schwartz, who has represented the president's attorney, Michael Cohen, in another legal matter. They're both here with me. But first, Randy Kay has the developments that broke today regarding Summer Zervos and Karen McDougal. And he came to me and started kissing me open-mouthed as he was pulling me towards him. That's Summer Zervos, a former contestant on The Apprentice. You know what, Summer? You're fired. Claiming Donald Trump groped and sexually assaulted her. She filed a defamation suit against Trump a year ago, long after they met at the Beverly Hills Hotel back in 2007. There, she alleges in court papers that he said, let's lay down and watch some telly telly. He put me in an embrace, in an embrace and I tried to push him away. I pushed his chest to put space between us, and I said, come on, man, get real. He pe repeated my words back to me, get real, as he began thrusting his genitals. Trump denies the affair, posting about it, I never met her at a hotel or greeted her inappropriately a decade ago. Trump's lawyers, meanwhile, have been working to stop the case from going to trial, calling it factually meritless. But just today, a New York state judge ruled the case can go forward. Zervos's complaint says she has details from phone calls and meetings with Trump. Despite that, Trump's lawyer, Michael Cohen, who has admitted to paying hush money to porn star Stormy Daniels about her alleged affair with Trump, has called Zervos's case baseless. Adding to Trump's troubles, this former Playboy model. Back in 2016, Karen McDougal signed a deal with American Media Incorporated, which owns the National Enquirer. McDougal says she accepted a $150,000 agreement to remain silent about her alleged affair with Donald Trump in 2006 and 2007. Like porn star Stormy Daniels, McDougal says she was paid to keep silent during the presidential race. But today, McDougal filed a lawsuit against American Media for the right to go public. This after learning American media's CEO, David Pecker, is a close friend of Donald Trump's and, according to court documents, regularly takes part in so-called catch-and-kill arrangements, killing the story before it can damage Trump publicly. The president denies the affair, but McDougal says she met Trump at a party at the Playboy Mansion. New Yorker magazine reported the two met later talked for a couple hours, then got naked and had sex. McDougal, a former Playmate of the Year, claims that she's been threatened with financial ruin if she doesn't remain, quote, loyal. But a spokesperson for American Media says they didn't silence her, but instead bought the rights to her life story. And it doesn't end there. McDougal alleges in court that her own lawyer was working in cahoots with that same Trump lawyer, Michael Cohen. Back in August 2016, soon after she signed the agreement to keep quiet, she claims in court papers that her lawyer told Cohen by phone that the deal was done and Ms. McDougal had been silenced. Randy Kay, CNN, New York. Well, Michael Cohen, of course, has a standing invitation to come on the broadcast. So far, he's yet to accept. Joining us now, his attorney in another legal matter and friend, David Schwartz, with us as well as Michael Avenatti, who, as you know, represents Stormy Daniels and who, again, released this picture of his client taking a polygraph test, which was back in 2011. According to the report he released from that polygraph test, Stormy Daniels was, and I'm quoting here, truthful about having unprotected vaginal intercourse with Donald Trump in July of 2006. That's a quote, I guess, from the polygrapher. One reminder about uh, the polygraphs are not generally admissible, of course, in court. Michael, uh, why release this information about the polygraph? Because, as you said, it's, as I said, it's not admissible in court. So does it help your legal case, actually? Well, I don't know that it helps our legal case, but we want the public to have as many facts as possible at their disposal. Our position, Anderson, has been consistent for weeks now. 
Uh, we want the public to know the facts, to know my client's story, to the extent that Mr. Cohen or the president have an alternative narrative that they wish to provide, they should provide it. You know, I'll, I'll note that while lie detector tests are not admissible in most courts of law, uh, I believe the Attorney General has most recently uh, argued for the use as it relates to leaks from the White House. Uh, I know they're used throughout law enforcement, federal law enforcement, for various purposes at various times. My client took this polygraph test in May of 2011, May 19th, 2011. She was asked specific questions. She passed with flying colors as the polygraph report that we produced shows. So we're going to let the uh, American public take this piece of evidence together with your interview with her this Sunday on 60 Minutes. They're going to determine whether she's telling the truth, whether she's credible, and I'm confident that after they view that interview and after they view this evidence, they are going to conclude that what they've been told by Mr. Cohen and the denials, if you can call them denials, from the White House are simply baseless and false. Uh, so, David, Michael Cohen has claimed that he paid this $130,000 right. in hush money out of his own pocket from a home equity line of credit. He did it, no, had nothing to do with the Trump organization, right. nothing to do uh, with Donald Trump personally or, or the, uh, the, the White House. I mean, does any attorney ever well, pay $130,000 well, out of their own pocket? First of all, we keep labeling it as hush money. It's pursuant to a non-disclosure agreement. These non-disclosure agreements are entered into every single day in, in America. It's, they're entered into by politicians, but it's money to by remain CEOs. silent. So, but they, but it's it's money to not disclose the substance of the case. Okay. And and so, one hundred thirty thousand dollars was paid. It was pursuant to a contract. But to answer your question, um, is, is is that normal course of business for an attorney to pay it? No. But there's nothing illegal about it. And it, given the context of this relationship, there's certainly nothing unethical about it. And remember, Michael Cohen was representing. EC LLC. It was EC LLC that entered into this contract. Donald Trump was a third party beneficiary. Does that make sense to you? Uh, it, it, it doesn't. Donald Trump was not a third party beneficiary under the law of California. He was a signatory to the agreement. What Mr. Cohen has said is as follows, that he negotiated this on his own, that he undertook all of this effort, and that at no point in time did his close friend and client Donald Trump know anything about it. He didn't know about the negotiation, he didn't know about the agreement, and he didn't, he didn't know about the payment. I have a very simple question, Anderson. If all of that is believable, then why did Mr. Cohen draft an agreement with a signature line for Donald Trump? Very if, Donald, if Donald Trump was never going to be a party to the agreement, and if he didn't want to bother Donald Trump with the agreement, and if Donald Trump was too busy campaigning for president to know anything about the agreement, and Mr. Cohen was going to do this on his own and wasn't going to bother Mr. Trump, then why take the effort to draft the agreement to make Donald Trump a signatory to the agreement? David, it makes there is well, that, that's painting a fictional picture of the whole scenario. There's an or there. So it could be ECLLC. Right, but why have any line for Donald because, Trump? Because they left it open. They left it open for either or. But the bottom line is what, EC, ECLLC entered into the contract. Right. It's, but, a no, real, but he's saying it's a real If Donald contract. Trump had nothing to do with this, why have a he line for He has everything to do with it. He was a third party beneficiary. You're just not acknowledging that fact that he's a third-party beneficiary to this contract he doesn't have to be a party to the contract to benefit from the contract but he certainly can enforce the contract like a third-party beneficiary can and this is a contract and you are advising your client to blatantly violate a contract and you know what she's liable for 20 million dollars and this is an airtight contract an airtight contract 1 million dollars per violation and it's not just the disclosure where do you get the 20 million dollar figure is because it, there were you, well if you read if you are read, you talking about her appearances on the make america horny tour no, well no, no it's 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 there are 20 different there are 20 different violations and you could see it because in the contract as it was artfully crafted it's even the threat of a violation it's even the threat of disclosure is a violation under the contract so, so she's going to be liable for 20 million dollars and Michael Cohen is going to collect every single penny of that money. Make no mistake, Michael? he's going to he's going to collect everything. Anderson, why isn't your name on the contract? Why isn't my name on the contract? Why isn't his name on the contract? If if Mr. Cohen's to be believed, 
All of our names should be on the contract. The fact of the matter is the story does not hold up. And Section 8.6 of the agreement specifically required all parties to sign the agreement. And or. I didn't interrupt you. Or. I didn't interrupt you during your bombastic comments. Please let me finish. 8.6 of the agreement provides that all parties are to sign the agreement. All parties did not sign the agreement. Here's another reason why this argument is full of holes. There are specific provisions in the agreement. Consideration that only Donald Trump could provide. It's not just about the $130,000. What do you mean specific consideration? If you look at the agreement, in exchange for what my client was to provide, she was to receive $130,000 plus other things. What do I mean by that? Donald Trump was to release her of potential claims that he might have against her. Donald Trump was to agree to stay away from her and her family. Donald Trump was to do all sorts of things laid out in that agreement. Now, Mr. Cohen, if he was only representing ECLLC as the claim has been made, how could he release or how could he provide that consideration, those terms that my client bargained how for? Can Mike, how can it's Michael, an absurd how, view of contract But law. how can Michael there, Cohen promise that Donald Trump would follow through Because the these consideration things? here is the non-disclosure of whatever she's about to disclose uh, in exchange for $130,000. But he's saying there's it's more than $130,000. There's consideration. There's two parties to the contract. Both parties signed the contract. And, and, um, but how can Michael apparent. Cohen promise that Donald Trump is not going to go near her family or Donald Trump is going to release her from other things if Donald Trump is not a because, signatory? Because those portions are irrelevant to the consideration at hand. It's so why are they in the contract? It's, it's 130000 I don't even know where he's reading that in the contract, but, but I, I didn't see that in the contract. But the bottom line is there's consideration, there's a contract, and there is a massive breach of this contract. And, you know, when this case is all said and done, you know, she's going to be liable for $20 million. But again, million I don't get the $20 million. I, I, I know it's a million dollars well, per whatever, breach. $10 million, Who knows how many millions of dollars well, No, but you guys this. have been saying 20 I'm just, well, I was trying to figure out where does that 20 figure come from? I, I just, I've been going by what, what they've been saying. So, but the 20 is easy because there are easily 20 different violations when it's the threat. It's the threat of disclosure of the material. And, and, and uh, she will have to pay this back one day. Why, why not just let her talk? I don't, I don't understand. Why, let me, because let me they signed an agreement. No, but let me finish. Why is it so important? Why is it so important to your friend and the President of the United States to keep this woman under wraps, to keep her under the thumb, yes. to shut her up? Right. Why is it so important? You know, well, let me I, I can tell you, I no, can tell let you why finish. it's Let me important. finish. Let me I finish. Can, I can tell you. Why, why is that so important? Well, let's answer why that not, question why first. Why not let her well, come forward? Let me answer your question. It's why important, not let her come it's important forward? to every why, single why person her? that enters into a non-disclosure agreement. People do this. People do this in order to avoid litigation and avoid the embarrassment to family, to business, to reputation. That's why people enter into these. You know why people enter into these contracts. They're entered into all the time. TV personalities have entered into these contracts. By the way, state legislators enter into these contracts. And you know who pays the money? The taxpayers pay the money right, we on those. We're going to take a break. We're going to continue the conversation. Well, tonight, the gathering storm has many fronts. A legal victory for one of the multiple women who have accused the president of sexual assault, a ruling that her defamation case can move forward. A former Playboy model wants to speak out about her alleged months-long affair with the president. And a lie detector test for the adult film star who also says she had sex with the president back when he was, in her words, just a goofy reality TV star. That, of course, is Stormy Daniels, the client of Michael Avenatti, who's back with us, along with Trump lawyer Michael, uh, uh, Michael Cohen's attorney and friend David Schwartz. So, uh, so Michael, you mentioned this Section 8.6 that says the agreement has to be signed by all parties to be enforceable. David points to this clause uh, right before the, the line on the NDA in which the uh, pseudonym for Donald Trump is used. And it, it says, and or, meaning... This, what I guess from from your interpretation, meaning not only does Stormy Daniels have to sign it, her pseudonym, Michael Cohen, but and or Donald Trump, and that line is not signed. And or would seem to indicate either he can sign it or not. And or is a term of art, uh, Anderson, under California law, and it's actually in the conjunctive. It's in the plural. And even if it wasn't, if the intent was to actually allow for the or, then Mr. Cohen reversed it. It should have, the, the EC should have been second, not first. 
That's the, actually the proper interpretation in the English language. But I want to go back to this argument. Because in a nutshell, here's the argument. Their argument is a deal is a deal. That's the argument. A deal is only a deal if there was initially a deal. And our position is there was initially no deal. Let me give you an analogy. This is like one of your viewers goes out and they buy a four bedroom home and they pay a significant amount of money for that home. They show up to move in and the people that sold them the home say, you're only getting one of the four bedrooms, but we have a deal because you're getting one of the four bedrooms. That's this argument. Because, because they paid $130,000 and because my client got $130,000, they say a deal is a deal. She didn't get all the consideration, Anderson. She didn't get bedroom two, three, or four in the deal. There was no deal. Well, tell and that to is, the judge. It is. Well, I, I mean, I'm looking forward. I mean, to, I'm looking forward to telling it to this judge. If it happens, I'm looking forward to telling it. I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to telling it to Judge Otero. Okay. The the federal district court judge in Los Angeles, and let me tell you why. Because I have a little bit of experience before Judge Otero, and I'm also aware of a 2010-2011 case that he decided where the parties did not sign the agreement. Just like this, where you don't have Donald Trump signing sign the, the agreement. agreement. And I am highly confident that we're going to prevail as it relates to this. If it's going to take David. him that long to explain it to the judge, he's in big trouble. All right? You're going to, you're going to go down in flames on this case. There's no question about it. I love there's, it when, there's the there's a I love it there's when a my opponents tell me there's that. A contract, there's, a, there's, a, there's a contract here. The parties signed the contract. Stormy, or whatever her name is, signed it on your side. And ECLLC signed it on this side. And you know what? Even it, Let's forget about the end of the offers second. You cannot assert a right when you obtain a benefit. You waive that right. You waive all your rights. You, she obtained the benefit under the contract. She received the, the bargain that she bargained for. Did so Michael Cohen violate the non-disclosure agreement by publicly discussing it and saying that, in fa confirming in fact that he had paid $130,000? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. He, he didn't violate the because it was already it, it was or she had already violated the well, no the it, had, it had been leaked to the Wall Street Journal well, she had violated that she had violated the contract already how so, had she violated so, the contract so, because she leaked it I mean she she's the one that was out there leaking the information but how do you know she was leaking the information well I guess it's going to come out in court right w so, why would she accept one hundred thirty thousand dollars in a non-disclosure agreement uh, and good. and and then leak the information Be 15 months later because she's out for more money now she sees a lot more money however you know and you're you're so you're, basically you're, but you have no evidence she actually leaked that the the information i i have i am assuming she did so so but well you know what they say about she, people that are clear, clearly that. clearly she was out there um uh breaking this non-disclosure agreement and you know what's going to happen she is going to you know you're you're advising your client to break a contract you're advising, so he puts in his papers how unethical Michael Cohen is, which I've never even seen in a complaint before. I don't know why you go through this whole Cause ordeal. Because I meant Because I meant it. But guess what? Because I meant it. Guess what? Because I meant it. You're the one that's committing malpractice. You're the one that's, that's telling your client to, vi to break a contract. And you know what? You're the one. So I hope you have a good malpractice policy. Because when she owes $20 million, she should go after you to collect the money. Anderson, you know the, the last time an attorney pointed at me like this and made threats like this, I tagged him for $454 million. And this is gonna be another okay. instance. And, and let me just ask this. Let me ask this, okay? Please do. You're a very passionate guy, okay? On behalf of your friend, Michael Cohen. My client. Okay, Michael your, Cohen. your client, Michael yeah. Cohen. Yeah. So let me ask you this. If Michael Cohen is such a stand-up guy, huh. where is he? I, I, no, 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 where is this guy? Why won't he come oh, and he'll, sit? Oh, he'll no, come. why won't he come he'll, and sit because in this obviously chair? Wait a minute, let me finish. There's let me other. Finish. I'll, I'll, no, 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 I want to answer that no, question. Let me finish. You get he's been invited numerous no, no, times. Oh, no, okay. He won't come on the right. show. So he, he's dodging the question. He is not dodging the question. He's dodging the question. He, he has to hide behind other, you. Where is this guy? There are other where is investigations going on. I knew there was some sort of problem. No, but where is this guy? I was wondering what was in that brown envelope. Where is he? He's going to come out. He can't wait. Believe me, he can't wait to come here and sit with you and talk about this Can't wait. He can give an interview. Bottom, bottom, air, bottom, he can't come bottom on this show. Is, let me, let me this ask. is an airtight okay, let me ask. contract. Michael Cohen, in an interview in Vanity Fair now, he did talk to Vanity Fair, it doesn't come in this program, but he did talk to Vanity Fair, said that he would have done this at any time, that, that this had nothing to do with the election, because this thing was signed, what, 10 days, uh, maybe yeah. two weeks right before, before the election, right? Uh, the Access Hollywood tape right. had come out, there was all the, all the sajida about it. Uh, 
Michael Cohen said it had nothing to do with the timing, it had nothing to do with the election. He would, Michael, this, if Michael Cohen had years to make an agreement with Stormy Daniels. I mean, 2011, there was an In Touch magazine article that, that got killed. Uh, if Michael Cohen had felt the need to make a non-disclosure agreement with Stormy Daniels, he had 2012, 13, 14, 15, 16. Why, do you, I mean, why should anyone because, honestly because believe this, this when, had nothing because, to do with the election? Because this is when she came out and threatened to, to disclose this information. The deal was made. It, it had everything to do with reputation, with family, with business reputation. Nothing to do with the election. All, all of those items, why a person would enter into a non-disclosure It's just a coincidence agreement. that this was some two weeks before well, the election? Well, but, that, but coincidence isn't the standard of law. They, there has to be proof. There has to be proof that it was done because of an election. And clearly it was being done to, to save the person's reputation so they don't have to go through litigation and to protect their family. Michael, did this have anything to do with the election? Absolutely. It had everything to do with the election. There's no question about it. You have to look at the timing. I mean, it, it is obvious as it is clear as day. And, and we keep hearing about how airtight this agreement is. Yep. It's one of the sloppiest oh. drafted NDAs. It includes superfluous, superfluous language. It's got language in there about paternities, paternity issues. If this is so carefully drafted by Mr. Cohen, we've stated unequivocally there are no paternity issues. If this is so carefully drafted by his client, why include language about paternity issues? If it's so carefully drafted, this agreement is supposedly so airtight. I hope the next time I get a, on a commercial plane, it's a little more airtight right. than this, because otherwise it's, it's going to fall out of the sky. Just, I mean, the, the viewers aren't seeing the agreement. This is an airtight agreement. It's an excellent agreement. Right, Lawyers have reviewed this. Let's take another quick break. Uh, we'll have more of this conversation in just a moment. Back now with Stormy Daniels' attorney, Michael Avenatti, and Trump lawyer Michael Cohen's attorney and friend, David uh, Schwartz. So, David, as we talked about, one of the things that Michael Cohen has said repeatedly is, again, I did this personally out of loyalty to right. my friend. I would do anything for him. Nothing to do with Trump organization. Nothing to do with the campaign. Um, Michael has produced... Uh, a, a number of documents uh, that, you know, a, a bank notice sent to Michael Cohen at his Trump Organization email address, which he then cut and paste onto his private email address uh, to then uh, send an email right. to then attorney for Stormy Daniels, uh, other documentation, and the hiring of a Trump Organization attorney to take part and set up, help set up this arbitration in Los Angeles. Well, well okay, the Trump attorney, that's after the fact. So that, that's not during the, the set Right, of but facts. that's what's even weirder to me is that after two weeks after the fact of Michael Cohen making a statement saying right. nothing to do with the Trump organization, he hires a Trump it, organization that's, attorney. That's after the fact. All right, so maybe they could have picked a better attorney. I mean, who, who knows? I think that's irrelevant. Getting to the emails, you know, I was actually looking at all my Michael Cohen emails from way back when he was at the Trump organization. Save you those. Know, you know, you know, save those. You know, you know, okay, yeah, I'll save those. Yeah, you know, he, well, he, Mueller, actually, may, Mueller he actually, may want him. Yeah, maybe. He actually made dinner plans with, uh, with his wife, my wife, and me on that same Trump email. He used that for everything. He used it for everything. And let Mueller speak for himself. If he wants it, he's more than welcome well, to my emails. Save him because I may want him. Uh, Ma yeah. Michael, to you, what is the significance of him using his Trump email? Because in, in one of the documents you, you showed in this broadcast, it seemed like he cut and pasted his no the note from the bank to his Trump organization email to then a private email address. Wh which there'd be no need to do that if, in fact, it was his common uh, practice to use his Trump organization email. That, that explanation doesn't make any sense. Anderson, there's a common pattern here. And the common pattern we see is as follows. When it's convenient for the president and Mr. Cohen to point to different entities and claim that they are separate, i.e. EC, LLC, and the Trump organization, they do so. However, when it's convenient for them to claim otherwise, they claim just the opposite, that they're one and the same. And I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. The temporary restraining order that Mr. Cohen went out and uh, received got, valid. Valid, got from the arbitrator. Well, yeah. I, I disagree, but that's neither here yeah, nor there. It's valid. That's neither here nor there. It's in the name ECLLC. We can agree on that, right? Yeah. Okay. ECLLC, pursuant to the agreement, wasn't even permitted to go out and get a temporary restraining order. You know the party that was But they got it. You know the party that was permitted to go out and get the temporary restraining order? Donald Trump. Right. Yeah, they got Somehow it. Somehow the arbitrator disagrees with no, you. No, no, the arbitrator didn't disagree with us you know, because it was it was a unilateral act. The arbitrator had no contrary. Yeah. It's like playing but, a football game it, and the other team doesn't even show up. When it fits up, into his narrative, you, it's and fine. And then you claim victory. You know, the the arbitrator, 
The, the, arbitrator, did, did the, the agreement, see, see when no, it's the arbitrator arbitrator narrative, agreement this agreement is horrible, the arbitrator is horrible, when the judge rules against them, he's going to be horrible. When it, when it doesn't go into your narrative, everybody's horrible. Let's what, just, was let, Stormy Daniels contacted about this arbitration? In fact, if it's not a, if it's not a con, why do you even go through the trouble of bringing this By the action? way, are you why licensed in California? Why, why don't, why are don't, you licensed in California? Absolutely not. Okay. Why don't, well, why don't, why don't you go wait through, a minute, you're not licensed why in California? Go, why don't you go through, why do you go through the trouble of wait following a minute, this? Wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to make sure that I understood this correctly. I, I, I want to make sure I understood this correctly. Yeah. This contract right. is going to be governed by California law. Yeah, I read law. California law. Right. I'm allowed no, to talk about it. You're not licensed in California? Yeah, right. And you're here opining Absolutely. and pointing your Abs finger Abs and engaging in Absolutely. all this bombastic nonsense. Bombastic. And you're, and you're not even licensed? The only thing that's bombastic... Is, well, this is, is, is this complaint talking about another lawyer's ethics? It had nothing I'm to do. shocked. I it thought had, you were licensed. It had, it had nothing to do. No, I'm licensed in Washington and New York. Okay, well, That's we're not licensed. This, this contract's not being governed by Washington. Yeah, and I New read York. California law. All of it? Yeah, all That's of it. That's impressive. Everything. Wow. Right. I read everything. Sure yes. you did. Yeah. So you, but, but. In an arbitration, I mean, again, I'm not an he attorney lost here. The arbitrator. But he lost but, but, but we didn't lose. We, we weren't does, does invited it, to the party. Does yeah. Stormy Daniels need to be contacted that there's this arbitration? I mean, doesn't do, do, does she have a right to to have representation at well, an arbitration? Well, she's she's, she's she's absolutely she's in court right now. So let's see what happens in court. You know, why if it if the contract was invalid, why do you even file this in the first place? Why not just break? Why not just go out and speak? Wait a if minute. If it's an All invalid right, so Michael, contract, that. Wait, wait, why why do you wait, file this? Wait a minute. You just claimed that we lost the arbitration. We weren't even invited no, I, to the I asked party. You, why no, did we you, okay, fine, you the won party. the arbitration. Why'd you file, why'd you file this complaint? Because we want a judicial determination that this agreement is trash, which it is. All right, we, we're going to yeah. end it there. Uh, appreciate it both representing your clients well. Thank you. Thank you.